welcome back to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the Sands Resort and Casino. It is main event time as we take a look at the Corona tail of the tape. Jamel Herring, he is undefeated. Two years older than Luis Eduardo Flores. Flores is taller, but the reach is the same. Both men are in the ring. We get the official introduction from Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Sands Casino here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event, live on FS1, 10 rounds in, the lightweight division. The three judges ringside are Bernard Bruni, Kevin Morgan, and John Pottery. And the referee in charge, when the bell sounds, Gary Rosato. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue with the yellow trim. His professional record, 21 wins, 17 of those coming by way of knockout against two defeats. Fighting on Puerto Libertad, Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, making his U.S. debut, presenting Luis Eduardo Flores. Across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red and the black. As a professional, perfect. 14 bouts, 14 victories. Eight of those coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Corum, New York, now residing in Cincinnati, Ohio. The 2012 Olympian and United States Marine, Jamel Semperfine Herring. Circuits. Luis, finger cut. Right there, Luis. Okay, Jamal. Mouthpiece in chat. Mouthpiece. Put it in. Okay, give you specific detailed instructions in the locker room. I'm only going to tell you two things. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Yeah. Touch gloves. What? Huh? Right here. You, you can get, just wipe that off over there. That's all right. All right. Okay. Get all right. Face, yeah. Touch gloves. Bang at the bell. Good luck. Jamel Herring says this is his breakout year. He told us next on his hit list, the big names in the lightweight division. All the guys ranked in the top 15. He wants a title shot by the end of the year. Luis Eduardo Flores making his U.S. debut tonight, fighting outside of Columbia for just the second time. He said Herring has no power. He's going to run around the ring, but he's going to cut the ring off and knock him out. This is round one. Herring, the red, the gray trunks. Flores, the blue, the gold trunks. And Pennsylvania, by the way, follows the unified rules. No standing eight count. No free knockdown rule only. The ref can stop the fight. Fighter can't be saved by the bell. In case of accidental foul or headbutt if it's before. The fourth round, it's a no decision. After four rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. There's a left hand Jamel coming out by quick. Herring. Herring coming out fast, using the fast jab, fast left hands. Well, he's heard a lot. Herring has heard a lot from Flores. You know, Flores has talked a lot about he didn't believe that Herring had a lot of punching power and can't withstand his power. Here's a right to the body by Flores. We're halfway through round one. by Flores. Flores throwing everything hard. He's trying to land something big this in the first round. Yeah, Heron's doing a, uh, a good job being composed, but he is turning it up. I think he's motivated by uh, his opponent not uh, respecting his military you know, background. One of the things Herring said, he's, what he's seen on tape, especially with Flores, he believes that he 
gases himself out by like the fourth round, fifth round. He feels like that's where he can really take advantage of Flores. I mean, you see Flores doing a lot of a lot of movement, you know, a lot of upper body movement with the arms, a lot of pawing, pawing, and then he attacks, you know, with some crazy wild shots, you know. He needs a good gas tank to continue that throughout the 10 rounds. See, Heron was trying to counter that overhand right Flores. Good eyes by, by Herring. Round one's in the Brooks. And Flores being aggressive, trying to land big shots. This is really just the second time for Flores that he has fought outside of his native home of Columbia. First time here in the States. Here's a left hand by Herring that gets through. The only other time that Flores has fought outside of his home of Columbia was once in Mexico. Flores has to be careful reaching in like that. He could get countered with a good shot in between. You know, one of the things Jamal Herring told us in the fighter meeting, he worked on sitting down on his punches. He wants to work on the inside. Get on the inside, he said, of Flores. Good work from uh, Herring. I mean, he's putting punches up and down. You know, he's giving his opponent something to look at, you know, in, in different spots and, and hesitant. But uh, Flores is going for the money, you know, almost every shot. I think there's a headbutt inside. The sneaky left hand, straight left in there by Heron. He's um he's been very smart, throwing straight punches on the inside. Man, your opponent's just running at you, throwing <laughs> throwing right hands. <laughs> but Heron's handling it. Heron likes the big screen. Every time he throws a combination, he looks he looks up to see how he looks. See if he's looking good out there, watching himself on TV as he's fighting. Yeah, right, you know. <laughs> 90 seconds left here in round two. Good composure by Heron also. When you, when you got an opponent that's in there throwing heat like that, and a little tall and lanky, you know, he's keeping his composure and, and staying on the inside, doing what he needs to do, very smart. Fighters coming in with their head a little bit. I won't be surprised if you see a, a head button there. It happens a lot against softballs and right handers tend to collide heads. Yeah, I got a couple stitches for for that situation right there. Yeah, myself. Me, me too. I got 13 on my head when I fall Zab. Oh, wow. <laughs> One of the reasons why you can say, oh, there's a left hand. That catches, yeah. catches Flores. Yeah, you hurt Flores with that. Body shot there by Heron. And another right hook. Oh. Good round for Jamel Heron. 30 seconds left here in round two. That was a beautiful left hand around, around the side. Not through the middle, around the side. Nice right Body hook. He shot the Herring. The combination choice from Herring is, 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 is beautiful. You know, he threw that right hook to the head, left to the body. That's awesome. Final seconds here, round two. Big round for Jamel Herring. Yeah, when, when, when you're in there with a guy like you, man, four-time world champ, you, you, you got to learn how to adapt. You know, you're going to pick up some of your tricks, you know. Uh, <laughs> man, I, that's, that's the way I came up, man. And just throw me in there with the wolves with anybody. That's the way you learn. Um, not only that, though, man. This guy, tra his tra training regimen is, is tremendous, man. He trains very hard. And I'm not just saying that because he's, cause he's, he's my stable mate, man. I, I'm dead serious. He's, he's one of the hardest trainers I've been in the gym with. So out of all the guys go, who go out there in D.C. and train, it, it, does he work hard as those guys or what? Man, he... I don't, he he be in his own world, man. I don't know if it, if it's because he is in the Marines or what, but that's what it is, man. He's disciplined. He's he's very disciplined. He's he's older and um, 
and he trains very hard because you know he was blessed with with a lot of talent that we got like Danny and um, myself. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he got to do the other thing. Well, one of the things that Jamel Herring told us that the Marines gave him was mental toughness. And if you look at Jamel Herring's background, you needed some mental toughness for him to be the captain of that Olympic team and then lose the first fight. He said. It was embarrassing to him. Uh, he felt like he wanted to set the stage, and he said, I set the wrong stage for them. Even from a personal standpoint, as Herring continues to pound up the combinations, he lost a baby girl to Sid, Sid and Death Syndrome. So he said, I had to be, I had to be mentally tough for a lot of things that's happened to me in life. I mean, you know, I mean, you've seen it, man. And, and um, me just being close to it, I'm just happy I, I'm able to experience all the moments with him. It's great. I believe all great champions have a special motivation, and that could be his spe special motivation. All the things he's been through in his life. So, in sparring, what, what special things do you see in uh, Heron? You know, AB. Um, give us a little insight. <laughs> I really don't. I, I really don't like talking about sparring outside the gym. You know, okay, I, I okay. just keep it in the gym. But um, I can tell you, you know, um, every day he learns something different. Every day I teach him something different, man. Oh, that's what's up. What would you like to see him do better in this fight? Um, he he really haven't been using his feints like like he should, you know. Um, and he usually he usually do, but um, I like him like him to work off the jab and work off the feints more. His jab has been working great. I mean, he just came off a, a, a one one two, you know, um, landed that left hook. He's in there having fun, man. He's getting comfortable. You know how it goes when you're in there with a guy and you just start getting that rhythm. You, know, you start getting that, you know, it's like music playing in there. <laughs> One thing about Jamel Heron, man, he's fundamentally sound, man. Uh, there's a straight left hand. And I can attest to that discipline. You know, me being from the Navy boxing team, uh, you know, man, you bring that discipline with you in training, I mean, in life, you know, so that's a big up to Jamel. <laughs> this is round four of our main event. Now you see, uh, you see Flores comes out utilizing a jab. Now we, <laughs> we haven't seen that. You know, these early, those first three rounds from him, he was just running in double right hands. Now this kid's corner must have told him something. You know, get it together, bro. And there's a sense of urgency, I think, from Flores with him having his U.S. debut. I think he's trying to be impressive. He, he talked about he wanted to knock out Herring. I mean, you know, when you're dealing with guys from overseas and guys from different countries, you know, they, they, they grew up watching the Mike Tysons, the, the Trinidads, and, and, you know, these guys, and the Danny Garcia's just knock guys out. So they, they want to be a star. They come to America, they want to knock people out, too, because they know the American fight fans love knockouts. And there's a good right hand that sneaks in by Herring. Colombian fighters are known for being strong and having a big punch. Yeah, they tend to look for the bomb like he's doing right now. One of the things he told us was that he said he was his left hook to the chin, he said it was going to be the punch that was going to take Herring down. Herring's doing real good using his angles and his footwork, so it's going to be kind of hard for Flores to land an open shot without a jab or a feint. Yeah, Heron is, uh, I mean, he's showing you he works well under fire. I mean, you see this, you've seen the pictures. He had his gun on him. You know, he's out in the desert, out in overseas. He's, he's used to being in a heavy heated situation. And, and Flores is bringing some heat, but he's slipping back, coming back with a counter. Some tall lightweights. Flores could possibly go up a couple more weight classes. He, he looks like he can hold the weight very well. Headbutts in there, man. That always happens with South Paul and North about. We're under a minute. There's a right hook by Herring. Herring looking for that overhand left. Herring's been landing that straight left, short and sharp, this whole round. He landed at least four times this round. Very, um, very good choice of punch, you know, for an aggressive guy. I like how he's keeping Flores off balance, too. He'll throw a couple combinations and step around to his right. Good one, too. And he'll move his head. Yeah, he's, he's, he's doing what Barry said about Williams, you know, that's um, staying off the line, you know. 
There you go, stepping around to his right. Yes. There's a right hand and miss by Flores. Danny, what did you think about what Mike Stafford was telling Jamal Hare in that corner? Yeah, definitely. Um, Flores is out there looking for bombs, and every punch he's throwing is with knockout written all over it. I think he's just keep using his combinations and stepping around to his right, staying out of danger, keep using his angles, moving his head, and fighting smart. Uh, Travis Kaufman, he of course in the corner listening in. Uh, Flores, what do they talk about there, Trav? Yeah, Flores' corner is telling him to keep a distance, uh, double his jab and drop his right hand. Um, you know, I disagree. I think you got to keep putting pressure and drop drop at his, at his chest because uh, because Herring has great head movement. So you can't really get a, a standing still target when he keeps moving his head. So aim for his chest and bring the head down. There was a left hand by Herring that got right in. This combination by Herring. Aaron just listened to his trainer. He did exactly what his trainer asked him to do. He said, hide the left hand behind the jab. He doubled that jab up and dropped that left hand on him. Good shot. There's a right hand by Flores. He looked back at the big screen and got hit with a right hand. <laughs> <laughs> Flores won't let up. I mean, he's one of them guys, and he's here for the, like you said, every shot's got knockout on it, even to the body. You, you can see the, the lightning behind him when he throws it. Well, you know, you know Flores said, coming here to the States. I want to fight here for the rest of my career, and I believe with my power, it could be big opportunities here. And see, that's the thing, when you have a guy that knows he's powerful, I mean, take Deontay Wilder for an example. He was fighting Spilka, Spilka was, was hanging in there for a second, but Deontay knew, once I land his right hand on you, you will go to sleep. He's got confidence in his right hand, just as Flores does. Flores got confidence in his right hand, that's why we see him launching it every time. I mean, he There's a good shot. Drops Flores left to the body. I think their feet might have got tangled up a little bit, but it was still a good body shot. I'll take it. <laughs> oh yeah, good that shot. Was a good left hand. That's that straight left, that short straight left that that'll get you faster than a wild one. Another left hook there by Jamel Herring. Herring looking real good this round. Everything and extra sharp and extra confident. You know, once you get a once you get a knockdown on a guy, you, it's the, your confidence goes through the roof. That was a good shot. They're gonna count that one as a knockdown. Check hook. Good call yep, coming in. Yep, good check right hook. Final 10 seconds here of round five. Flores has gone down twice. Another left hand by Herring. Flores is at the point now where he's trying to get shots to give shots. Dangerous. And, and taking a look at that, it was almost like his, his right hand was on the back of his head. Flores' head, it was, you know. It's because Flores' momentum, he was coming in heavy with something heavy and some, you know, he already, Jamil already ga gauged it. Yeah, he's coming, he's reaching when he's coming in. So he just had to throw the right hook and it was right there for him to go down. The momentum. Good shot, good right left hook. He he's keeps throwing it. Yeah. <laughs> and well, hey man, like I said before, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> if you could come with a quick left, straight left hand right off that right hook. Yeah. He, 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 got, clean he got two two knockdowns last round. Jamil's feeling good. You know, the Marine, once a Marine, always a Marine, he's going to work here. Let's take a look at the punch stats. This is through five rounds. And Herring, nearly 250 punches. He's landed 24% of those. Flores, just a buck 41. You see how Herring's controlling the distance with his legs and his head movement. I mean, that, that's a beautiful thing to watch you know, for us boxing aficionados. You know, he, he's fainting a little bit. He's getting just far enough away for his opponent to take a chance just like that. And so he can count him. Yeah, he has total control. Flores can't get in right now. He doesn't know how to get in right now. He's trying to bounce a little bit and trying to get back on his rhythm right now. But he can't, he, he can't come in without reaching. Ninety seconds left here 
in round six. Here's another right hook by Heron. Heron's doing his thing. I mean, he's his first time on TV. This is what you're supposed to do when you're on TV for the first time. Bright, shining star. You know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to bling. He, he's blinging right now. Just the two big right hooks that missed. There's the left hand, though. Straight left hand right down the target. The straight left hand has been the, the silent assassin the whole night. He's been throwing it. It's not a big telegraph shot, but it's got power on it. And that short distance brings damage. Yeah, he's a, he's a really good straight puncher. You see that discipline. I mean, like Adrian Broner said, this dude works hard. You can see the discipline in, in his boxing style in the ring from his training camp. Now he's walking Flores down. I like how he's going to the body now. Thirty seconds left here in round six. Good left hand. Put that left from the body to the head. Good job. There's a body shot by Heron. Final ten seconds here, round six. I like how he followed up with that right hook off of that combination there. Now headlining for the first time, he said, in his career. He said he's so proud of what some of his fellow teammates have done now as professionals. And, you know, that team got ridiculed so much because you know, no one basically meddled. They were also talented. But you look at them as pros, whether they won 42 and 1, I think, combined. Now as professionals, it's and amazing. Making the, making the Olympic team is just a feat that not many human beings can 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 say, you know? And sometimes the amateur system doesn't favor American fighters. So you, you yeah. can't really go off that. You're right. I mean, you also see how, you know, uh, Aib is changing. You know, rules just change and change and, uh, you know, favor certain styles. But, you know, we're Americans. We're going to keep pressing on. They took away the headgear, so yeah. I think that'll favor the Americans a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a look at how you, the fans, have this one scored thus far on throwdownscoring.com. And you've got Jamel Herring pitching a shutout thus far through six rounds. As we hear round seven, and it's Herring turning up the heat with a couple of hooks. hit the guard of Jamel Herring. I like his energy. I was about to mention that. You know, his legs, he's just, he's showing his, sometimes you break your opponent mentally by showing, I'm, I've got energy in this round and I'm still bringing this fire to you. He hits a lot harder than I believe Flores thought he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that. Here's another left to the body, right hook upstairs. And you see those body shots, those body shots hurt Flores. I noticed the last round when he hit him before the bell rang over here. You don't like those body shots at all. His hands are dropping. You see Flores landed a nice straight right. Oh, there's a check right hook there by Heron. He landed a nice straight right on Heron, and Heron threw his hands right back up. Discipline, man. I can see why he was the captain. Yeah, no doubt. A lot of discipline. And you can tell he's a hard worker. He's probably waking them guys up every morning to go running. He's got Flores against the ropes as he digs to the body. For his first time on TV, man, televised fight. He's doing a, a great job. A dominating performance. Both men exchange a couple of hooks. Now he pounds the body of Flores. Oh, straight left by Heron. It's like chopping down a tree. You need to chop that tree down. This is almost a stub now. Just turned 30. I love I love Jamel's Heron energy in the corner. Do you see him? You know, he, he's assuring his coaches that all right, man, I got you. You know, he's a little tap to his coach. <laughs> This guy is a, is a very like he has a very likable style, very, very likable attitude, 
in persona, you know, he's going to win a lot of fans tonight. Uh, Travis Kaufman has been listening in to the corner of Luis Flores as he, Flores, connects with the left hook. Travis, what were they talking about in that corner? Yeah, Flores' uh, trainer is telling him that he needs to stay off the ropes. If he keeps getting hit the way he's getting hit, they're running and stopping the fight because uh, he's taking too much punishment when he's on the ropes. I think that left hook might have bought his hearing a little bit. I think it, I think it set him straight. I think it yeah. calmed him down. Yeah. You know, because I seen him, his vision and using his legs a little more. Yeah, we were just talking about how you gotta you gotta have a poker face in this ring. Good straight left by Heron. Body to the shot ball. there by Heron. Last time. Oh, another right hook. Flores, his last loss came in October of 2014. Okay. Flores has only lost twice. Here's a left uppercut by Herring. Body shots. Chopping that tree down. He's been chopping his tree down since the first round. Right hook. Stiff jab by Herring. And he's staying right in front of his opponent in the pocket. Defense high, going back to work. Beautiful job. Body shots, digging to the body, uppercut by Heron. He's broke Flores' will. The will is broken, I believe. You said once a Marine, always Marine. As he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Luis Flores, and it is Jamel Heron bringing the heat. This is what you like to see in prospects. Exactly. You like to see that explosion, that excitement. First time being the headliner, and Jamel Herring is showing out. I'm impressed. I'm thoroughly impressed. Especially with a guy like Flores. Hey, any break we can get, you know? <laughs> yeah, if you're in Luis Flores, even though that one may have been a little low, hey, boy. You... Final seconds. This is round nine. This one is scheduled for 10. See Flores come out with his hands high. His corner is trying to, trying to give him the instructions, man. It's just sometimes, you know, when, like you said, when you, want, when you want to come to America and get that knockout, all that goes out the window. And I'll tell you what, you know, one of the things that when Adrian Broner worked, was sitting here earlier talking with us and how he, in this camp, gave him some lessons on fighting on the inside. It certainly has paid dividends in this fight. Yeah, when you're in there working with a four-time world champion like Adrian Broner, Throughout your camp, that sharpens you up. You know, that only that's only a plus for you. Let's take a look at the punch stats here through eight rounds, and look at that boy. I mean, Herring's basically doubled the output of Flores. Talk about punches thrown. Yeah, look at the combination there. By Herring. Herring's just doing whatever he wants, you know, he's, he's throwing left hooks, right hooks, straight rights, straight, I mean, <laughs> going to the body. He's having fun like his trainer said. Yeah, Flores just seems, he can't, he can't find the range. He doesn't know really how to find it, where to land, or how to cut the distance, or how to get closer, see? Heron makes those little moves that mean so much on the inside, just a smidgen of, of, of space that nullifies his opponent's punch. He keeps looking at the, the screen over here, you know. <laughs> Excited to see himself on the big screen, huh? Straight left hand there by Herring. Wants to make sure he's looking good. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice combo. 
you know, Steve, you obviously being in the armed forces, you talked about he just needs to be a Marine. I think he, he's shown that tonight. Oh, yeah, he totally has. I mean, that commercial where they say we do more before, you know, 10 o'clock, you know. We, Most people do all day. Exactly. That thing is true, man. Listen, you get pushed to your brink in the military, and uh, but you can go further. You know, that's what it shows you, man. And that's why Broner said this dude's one of the hardest workers he's seen. Carry, that carries on in life also. Final seconds of round nine. Jamel Herring is pitching a shutout. Tenth and final round coming up here. Well, here we go. Tenth and final round of our main event. How about Jamel Herring not sitting down at all? I mean, listen, when you're in the groove and you're in that rhythm and, and you're doing as well as he's doing on your pro, your television debut, Man, listen, I'm not surprised he's not sitting on the top rope like a wrestler. <laughs> Fleur is going the wrong way fighting a softball. He's going to his right. He has to go to his left and cut the ring and try to land his big shots. But as long as he keeps going that way, Herring is just going to keep circling and countering him all night like, like he's been doing. Flores is in in knockout mode. He just wants to hit. That's all he wants to do. Forget rules, forget anything. He's just going for it. And he's listening to his corner. You know? Just got caught with a left hook. He's just trying to throw a straight punch. Everything he's throwing is looping. Harry's just getting out of getting out of danger. And if you the fans here watching, you can see Herring kind of look up. You're like, what is he looking at? Well, there are two giant screens up top here inside the event center at the sand. So, you know, he's looking at that. And obviously it has a clock on there. So, I mean, and also, you know, he's looking at himself be pretty, you know. <laughs> Cruising to victory. Look, doing a good job, too. Get a quick time check as well. There's a short left hook. There's those screens I'm talking about. Very important to stay focused in that ring and really don't worry about what's going on outside. Yeah, as he as he goes up in competition, you know, uh, you know, they're gonna they're gonna make sure he doesn't look at the, the teleprompter or the screen. Oh, good body work. I mean, yeah. he's playing the drums on uh, Flores' body this round. A couple of shots to the body, then came upstairs. As we go now, under a minute left here in this main event. Good check right here. And he spin, spun off of good stuff. Fighting real smart. Getting his combinations off, stepping around. That's what you like to see. Totally. And he's not and he's not getting so much space from his opponent that, you know, because it's the last round and he's trying to coast to a win. He's, he's right in front of his opponent. Good dips, man. I mean, hats off to Flores. You know, he's going for it. He has to go for it. You know, he, he's doing what he's supposed to do right now. Here we go, last 20 seconds. Yeah, so just put his hands up and walk straight to him and just, just let him go. Go to work. But Jamil's legs are just pretty good. And those body shots. Ooh, that's the drums again. That's the bass. Perfect fight. What a showing for Jamel Herring. Good. Headlining for the first time in his career. And he was impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds, we go to the scorecards. Here are your scored totals. Judge at ringside, John Pottery scores the bout 99 to 89. And judges Kevin Morgan and Bernard Bruni have the bout 100 to 88. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And remaining imperfect, Jamel Semperbud Herring. He headlines and he wins.